Suzuki has been on a roll recently. I mean, considering how huge Intel is in the silicon industry, it's incredible that for the past three or four years, AMD has not only caught up to Intel, but even surpassed them in a lot of ways with regards to their technology. I mean, the extra competition has really been a boon for everyone. Did you know that Intel pre-Ryzen 1000 was offering a high-end desktop CPU, the 6950X, a 10-core, 20-thread CPU for $1,700. And now their new 10-core, their high-end, um, I guess, con regular consumer desktop chip for around $500 is not only a third the price of the 6950X, it'll also be way faster. And since AMD has been on such a good roll and has built up such a good reputation, it's kind of hard to imagine AMD leaving the AM4 platform that has made them so successful in the first place. But given the way that technology is progressing, they're likely gonna have to in the next year or two. I think with the change in socket, AMD really has an opportunity here to show people okay, here's the things that we're doing with our new technology and why we need a new socket. Because AMD's not like Intel, where Intel will just throw a new socket out of nowhere and just shrug when people ask them why they needed a new socket. So what can AMD do to set their next socket, which I'm tentatively calling AM5, apart from the currently existing AM4? And obviously I'm not gonna list a bunch of obvious stuff like PCI Express 5 or DDR5, or more PCI Express lanes, because all that stuff is kind of obvious and wouldn't make for a very interesting video. So here's some ideas that I've researched that are a little bit more out there, but if AMD could really pull them off, I think it could be a huge game changer. So I think if you've been reading uh, some of the interviews with some AMD engineers who talk about designing the Zen architectures, uh, you'll kind of notice that they talk about like the cores are kind of bottlenecked by the rest of the system. So there's always just something that is not feeding the cores enough that, you know, the cores can do what they do and process more. Now, obviously the Infinity Fabric clock is always going up every generation and I'm sure the next socket will improve that as well. But I really think that AMD could make a revolutionary move by introducing three-way multi-threading on the next socket. I really do think that three-way multi-threading is gonna be one of the ways that we can get a major performance boost out of the already good Zen architecture. It's probably gonna get even better by the time this next socket happens, rather than just try to force node shrinks. And I think AMD themselves has even talked about the idea of not going nearly as aggressive with node shrinks in the future and focusing on other areas of CPU development. And yeah, I know three-way multi-threading has a lot of real-world downsides right now. One of them being just that software is not programmed to support more than two threads per core. And also just due to the way that multi-threading works, that if you're not really optimizing for having a third thread, the performance overhead is gonna cause you to lose this performance. But I trust that given AMD's incredible IPC gains over the past couple generations that they can offset this performance loss with enough of an IPC gain and nobody really notices any performance loss at all. Now next up on this list, uh, I'm actually gonna be praising Intel a little bit for one particular thing they've been doing over the past couple years that AMD really hasn't done so I wish that AMD would copy Intel in this way. Well, I will give credit to Intel. As much as everybody makes fun of them for the CPUs being too hot and the power draw being too high and being overpriced, that they are objectively offering more physical cores per generation for the same price compared to their previous products. And while core count obviously isn't the objective measure of an entire CPU's performance. It's interesting to see Intel rapidly iterate on their core counts while AMD has kind of stayed relatively steady. I mean, they've added, you know, 12 and 16 cores, but they've added on top of the existing product stack. They haven't 
shifted higher core counts down. And so it's interesting how AMD is doing more architectural changes, but they are kind of pushing the industry forward more in multi-core stuff, even though they themselves are not pushing the average core count per dollar higher. Now, I think if AMD can't really push that much more performance any other way through like IPC or architectural changes at the moment, that I think at the very least, having set the standard as 12 cores for AM5, so 12 cores being around 300 to $350 CPU price as kind of like the baseline, I think would be a really, really smart move. And software developers are now developing software for eight cores. And eight cores is much more distributed than developing for something like four cores. So presumably that is able to scale up a little bit more. So I think AMD has the potential advantage here of just being able to make everybody have way more performance from day one just with their software than putting out an eight core like they did previously and just hoping that the software would, would eventually catch up. And for all you PC gamers out there, I would not be surprised that by the time AMD puts out a 12 core uh, desktop part as a standard that the next gen console games are gonna be using all eight cores and all 16 threads. So for any of you with 1700Xs, 2700Xs, Hell, maybe even 3700Xs like me. Um, I think we might, people might start be struggling with running a lot of these games without any headroom for Windows or other applications in the background. So having a 12 core standard, I think is gonna be nice for people who are multitasking at the same time while they are gaming. And for this final one, I, I straight up stole this idea from Cortex. I've been watching his videos a lot. Go subscribe to him, he's a fantastic channel. And so I thought this way, um, this new thing, AMD implementing it would be another attack vector that is entirely new that Intel would not have. So the idea is heterogeneous architecture. And I know that's a big fancy set of terms there, but let's go through it. So the idea being that we have heavyweight cores and then lightweight cores. So heavyweight cores being like the current Zen 2 cores we have now, where it's more meant to process big chunks of data that are single threaded and the lightweight cores are way less powerful, but they use a ton less energy. And so they are more for just overall general throughput of data. And I know people in the audience are gonna say, well, what about Intel Alder Lake, their CPU architecture coming out in uh, 2021? That is a heterogeneous design. And yeah, that's true, but kind of looking at sort of what they're planning to do with that, it seems less like they're doing it out of like, oh, we want this for more like throughput applications. It seems more to make up for the amount of core deficit compared to AMD because like having the same number of heavyweight and lightweight cores seems kind of strange for if the atom cores are more meant for throughput. So to me, it says we, we can't make a proper 16 core CPU. So we have to slap these eight atom cores so we can at least try to get to the performance of something equivalent to like a 12. Now, AMD doesn't really have a problem with parallelism right now. I mean, Jesus, I have a 64 core Threadripper. So I don't think that's the issue. I think what's more interesting is having this kind of middle ground between um, a GPU, which processes a lot in parallel, and a CPU, which has a, f a fair amount of parallelism, but nowhere near a GPU, but is able to use already existing software development and instructions for a CPU in a new way. I know software is always getting more optimized for GPUs and getting developed for GPUs as the days goes on. But there are still things that, you know, it's not worth it for the people who develop these pieces of software to just start a whole new part of the software development just for GPUs when, to be honest, 
you know, not everybody on the planet uses a high power GPU in the first place. So anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, none of these ideas are, are original in, at all. Um, I've done a lot of research on this, but, you know, I hope AMD includes at least one of these things in their future architectures in the near future. So anyways, guys, that's it, and uh, have a good day.